The OSHA regulations are the back door into Biden trying to get all of us to get the jab. But there's pushback from companies in the courts. And will President Trump run again? I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked. Those who uphold the law resist them. Welcome to the Voice of Resistance. Hi, friends. We will return to the uh, discussion of whether or not President Trump will, former President Trump, will seek another term later on in the program. Right now, let's talk about the jab. It's almost surreal to watch what the Biden administration is doing. And by the way, President Trump is, if he is going to run again, he's got a problem on his hands regarding the jab. He just does. Now here's the problem, both for former President Trump and for President Biden. The, the data that is coming in on a weekly basis is showing that the notion that the jab will keep people from getting sick is false. Not just the anecdotal evidence. A couple months ago, I mentioned to you that we have a friend who's a nurse in an intensive care ward at a hospital. And she told my wife and I, look, the majority of the people who are hospitalized right now for COVID all had the shot. They got the jab. And they got COVID, a breakthrough case, they call it. Well, now what we're seeing is that more and more people who got the jab are testing positive for COVID, one of the variants, because the jab didn't deal with the variants. So the question is, the theory, things people are discussing is, did the jab somehow weaken their immune system? Did it make them more susceptible? We don't know, but the the simple fact of the matter is that the Biden administration is pretending that being inoculated is going to keep people from getting COVID. And if you won't get inoculated, you're threatening other people's lives. You're somehow a villain. By the way, an aside on that is that one of uh, my friends I was talking to the other day said, this is just a precursor. They're trying to get the sheeple, you know, American people who, yes, sir, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. They're trying to get the sheeple to just get ready uh, to, to be... Um, used to taking orders, stupid orders, dumb orders, so that when they then say everyone is going to be vaccinated or you can't travel or you can't go in a store, some really intense clamp down, and then they say, we're coming for your firearms. Just getting people used to obeying tyrannical orders, orders that don't make sense, orders that are not grounded in the Constitution, or in science. So anyway, to come back to the Biden's problem. The Biden administration, you, you watch this press secretary who makes me crazy. You watch her and you would think that everyone who got the inoculation was safe. It's an absurdity. It's just not true. They're lying, but they refuse to tell us the real data. And so once again, we see the left-wing media has made this, for some reason I don't understand, has made this a part of the mantra that you've got to take the jab. Now, my, you know, one of my theories is that they're doing it to just protect Biden. If Biden says we have to do it, then we have to do it. Why? Because Biden says we have to do it. Is it, is it correct? Is it true? Is it accurate? Is it scientific? It doesn't matter. Biden said we have to do it. And we are committed to be in lockstep with the Biden administration because we don't want Republicans running the country. We certainly don't want former President Trump to come back. So we see this, this lockstep analysis of the inoculations, which are clearly not working. And now we have this demonic, and I mean literally demonic, rush to inoculate children. Do you realize numerically, statistically, that there is almost no chance of a child dying from COVID? Virtually no chance. Now, there have been a few instances where children have died. 
How many of them had respiratory problems? How many of them were grotesquely obese? How many of them had comorbidity? A lot of them, all right? The simple fact of the matter is that the common flu is way more fatal to children than COVID. But the side effects of the COVID jab, we know that tens of thousands of people have died because the CDC's website says so. Tens of thousands of people have died from complications from getting the inoculation. Children do not pose a risk to themselves or to others. And yet there's this mad, insane rush. And now cities like San Francisco are saying, if your kid doesn't have the jab and they're between the ages of, I think it's six and 11, we won't let them in a store. Well, they won't be able to go to a school, but they won't be able to go to McDonald's. This is evil. This is tyranny. This is not based in anything scientific. This is based in a desire for bureaucrats and tyrants to control people and to ignore the data. So I, when, I, I admit, as experienced as I am, as many battles as I have been in, as much malice that has been shown to me personally, I still have this little Anne of Green Gables sunshine thing in my heart where I can't believe that there are people that are this evil. It eludes me how people could be this deliberately dishonest, this deliberately filled with malice and filled with an agenda. It eludes me. I don't understand it. I can't get my head around it. So, my inability to grasp it really isn't the point. I'm just being honest with you. The point is that there are people who are following blindly. Thousands of people have died. Thousands more are getting sick from the jab. And the data is out. The most inoculated country in the world is Israel. And now the data shows from Israel that if you have the jab and you don't have the jab, just have normal inoculation going on in your system versus the jab, that or normal antibodies rather, that more people are getting COVID after the jab percentage-wise than people who didn't get the jab. The data is there. I mean, I know it's crazy and I don't want you putting this in the headline. Don't put this anywhere in the headline. But the data is there. That you're more likely to get COVID if you've been inoculated. Statistically, according to what's in Israel, statistically, you're more likely to test positive for COVID if you've been inoculated. So at least give us, you know, the chance to step back and say, you know, maybe I don't want this inoculation. I don't know. I, you know, I, no, I don't think I will. No was rushed. We don't know what the long-term effects are. Nah, I'm not going to do it. You are trying to kill people. You are selfish, evil person. You must obey the state. You must get the jab. Otherwise, you are the enemy of the state. You are the enemy of your neighbor. You are a bad person without the jab. Show me your green card. Show me your yellow star. Or get in the wagon. I'll be right back. Former President Trump recently attended a fundraiser for Republican House candidates, U.S. House. And in it, he said, uh, and he has been saying, that after the midterm elections, he is going to decide if he is going to run for the presidency again. I think that it's safe to say that if he runs, he will blow anyone out of the water who tries to run against him in a primary. So it's way too early to talk about his health. Uh, it's too early to talk about whether or not the networks are going to do live coverage of his rallies like they did way back in 2016, which ended up helping him. And we don't know the impact of him not having tweet at his disposal. We don't know the impact of the new company that he is starting will have. The, the, um, you know, the competition with YouTube and Google and, and Twitter. These are all unknown factors. But he has said that he will make his announcement after the uh, midterm elections. And he said, I think it's going to make a lot of people happy. So just for the sake of it, 
two things that President Trump is going to have to deal with that are just not going to go away. Never mind, you know, they'll keep bringing up Russia, even though we all know now that it was fake. They'll bring up potential indictments against him and his staff from New York City and blah, blah, blah. But the two things that are going to haunt him on a regular basis from the mainstream media are the January 6th riots in Washington, D.C. And what role did he or did he not play? And also the jab, the inoculation, the COVID shots. Because he instituted Operation Warp Speed. He pushed for those to come out quickly. There was a lot of corners cut. It was a technology that in part had never been used before. And by the time the 2024 election rolls around, we have no idea what kind of backlash there is going to be against the inoculations. The Monteclono, uh, I know I'm mispronouncing it, but the, those antibodies, they're clearly working. We know that the protocol for ivermectin and for um, hydroxychloroquine mixed with other um, pharmaceuticals and or zinc, et cetera, vitamin D. We know that these are now becoming more and more common treatments for COVID. And President Trump, you know, Biden wanted to ignore, like President Trump had nothing to do with getting these vaccines out. But if the vaccines turn out to be actually negative, if the data as it rolls in shows that the vaccines did very little good or even did more harm than good with a lot of people, they're going to turn on President Trump like rabid dogs. So he's going to have to walk a really, really frighteningly fine line. He was asked recently by Sean Hannity if he would have mandated anywhere the um, vaccines, and he said no. I would have strongly encouraged it, but he would not have mandated it for the military and would not have mandated it for hospitals, which is good. I mean, he had to say that at this point, he knows that his base is pro-freedom, pro, hey, it's my body. If I don't want an inoculation, I shouldn't have to get it. So he realizes that on a political level. And hopefully he actually believes it as well, that you can't mandate people to get a vaccination. And certainly we should not be telling parents that their children have to be inoculated to go to school or to go into a McDonald's. This is tyranny at the at the highest level. I mean, it's not maybe that's an overstatement, but this is tyranny. I mean it's it's not a concentration camp, but it's tyranny. So we'll see what happens. President Trump is is waiting in the wings or former President Trump is waiting in the wings and I read something the other day from a left-wing journalist who said President Trump's greatest asset right now is Joe Biden. The thing that keeps Trump in the game is Biden. Because by every definition, so far, the Biden presidency is an abject failure. Tell me one thing, one, where Biden has gotten it right. Inflation? Afghanistan, the southern border, transportation, energy. Where has Biden gotten it right? What has the Biden agenda done for our country that people can say, that's my president. He helped me with blank. Doesn't exist. By any measurable means, you cannot look at the Biden presidency and be happy which is why his numbers are so bad right now. I think over two thirds of independents have said they won't vote for Biden again. Those numbers are a death knell because the independent voting block in this country is so huge. So the Democrats have to know this. They're looking at the data, they're looking at the numbers and they're in a five alarm fire mode as, as uh, Van, what's his name said from CNN, Van Jones. Anyway, I've got to take a break. President Trump waiting in the wings. We're in trouble, friends. When we come back, I want to talk to you just a little bit about transportation and hoarding and Christmas shopping. Don't go away. Inflation, shortages, hoarding, early purchasing. These are now in the headlines. 
So I was in the store the other day and I could not believe the number of shelves that were empty. So I was with my, uh, my 19 year old son, we're walking through the store and he just randomly grabbed the guy at the meat counter, didn't grab him literally, but he's like, sir, sir. He goes, my son goes like this and waves his hand. He goes, why are all these shelves empty? And the man stopped and said, hoarding. He said, We've ordered, we're ordering the same amount of stuff, but people are coming in now and they're buying things that they don't even need because they've heard that there are going to be shortages. I was talking to another lady just randomly going down the aisle and she looked at me, we, I don't know, I asked her about something. I, Do you know where blank is? And she said, and she's got two things in her hands and she says, I'm buying things that I don't even need right now for fear that I won't be able to get them later when I need them. So what's the solution? Unfortunately, there isn't one. In other words, there's no way that we're all gonna collectively say, okay, everyone, stop buying toilet paper. Remember when COVID first hit? The massive toilet paper shortage that there was? Because everyone knew that toilet paper cured COVID. It's funny how when you begin to obsess about one thing and everyone was afraid, what if I don't have toilet paper? And so the shelves were empty. And then when it would come, people would be waiting in line and grabbing one and the stores were saying one per customer, two per customer. Well, now it's across the board and it's random. You know, the milk and eggs don't keep well. So I haven't seen a run on milk and eggs, but you can freeze meat and you can buy frozen food items and you can freeze bacon. I, I hate to say it, I really hate to say it, but the simple solution is if you have a Christmas gift that you wanna buy for someone that you love and you see it in stock, buy it now. I mean, now we're into mid-November, so it's really not that early, but the simple fact of the matter is that because of the supply chain being disrupted, because of the ships that are sitting off of the coast of California, Last count I heard over a hundred ships because they don't have the people on the docks to unload them. And then when they get them unloaded, there's a shortage of between 10,000 and 12,000 truck drivers. How can this be happening? Well, there's two big reasons. One is that the government, Joe Biden, etc., paid people so much money to not work. And it started with President Trump, by the way. But they paid people so much money to not work they finally thought, I like this. I can be in my pajamas and watch TV all day, play video, as long as the liquor store is open, as long as I've got food, I'm good. Then you have, and this is far less, but it's really critical and it's going to cause a crisis in this country. You have areas where they are mandating vaccines. So if you look at what's happening, for example, in New York City and in some of the other major cities where they are requiring police and firemen to get the jab or hospital workers. And they're saying, go to hell, I'm not getting it. Thousands of New York City policemen have retired, taken early retirement or quit. And now you've got law enforcement people in Oregon or in Florida, the governor of Florida saying, we'll pay you a $5,000 bonus. If you wanna be in law enforcement, we've got your back, come on down, become a part of law enforcement here. And by the way, we don't require you to wear a mask and we certainly don't require you to get the jab. I've got to take a break. We'll be right back. I have some fun personal news. About four years ago, a little over four years ago, we filmed a time travel movie for children called Time Boys. I wrote it, my family and I wrote it, my four boys star in it. Some phenomenal musicians are in it. I, they're, they're singing in the soundtrack. Literally world famous rock and rollers and blues players are in this movie. And we've begun to submit it to film festivals. And we have won almost 30 laurels from eight different film festivals. Go ahead and just start rolling through these. So we're submitting it uh, in small and medium film festivals. And the majority of the film festivals that we've entered so far have awarded us at least something, literally. We're very excited, we're very proud. The movie is ready to go to film festivals 
it's not quite done. We still have to pay for the credits to be finished and for some of the outtakes, you know, the funny stuff. If you would like to help us to finish Time Boys, I'm asking you to go to the website or to actually call the phone number on your screen. Call them and say, I'm making a contribution for Time Boys and we will send you a review DVD of the movie for a gift of any size, okay? Now remember this, <clears throat> it's a review DVD. You cannot sell it, you cannot post it online, okay? You can watch it, you can show it to your family and friends, but this is a review copy. We are in the middle of searching for a distribution deal and I ask you for your prayers. But this, the, the story behind this movie is incredible. A kid surviving cancer, homeschool, families coming together, sets being built. It's just, it's been, it's been amazing. So if you wanna help us with Time Boys, call the number on your screen and say, I'm making a contribution for Time Boys and we will send you a review copy of the movie. God bless you.